you want to try and get one up on me, I can, uh, uh, sorry kid, it ain't my first goddamn county fair. But when some, so when some guy comes in and has been wrestling five years, and I've been wrestling uh, 15 years, and has been to all these different goddamn places and seen all this shit, I am so far above them mentally with mental gymnastics. As far as the wrestling business, what I did was I intimidated a lot of people. Because I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck. Welcome to Lila Studios. Today is Friday. God, see, and I don't. I'm not even doing it on purpose today. Friday. It's the Friday the thirteenth. Oh, oh my God. Friday God. the thirteenth, man. God, I, I, okay. I make, better make sure. Friday. Friday the thirteenth. Thirteenth. I got to make sure I don't cuss today. Are you superstitious? Hell, I mean, heck yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not a real cuss word, is it? That no, right? you can say hell. I think. Okay. But, so, I mean, we might as well just get right into this cussing thing. Mm-hmm. Last week, Rip was going to try his best not to cuss. Well, I, I think I did for a little while. I don't think you really put much effort into it at all. I mean, did you watch the episode? Did you re- rewatch it? I, it? You can you can admit that you watched it. It's okay. Yeah, I wa- oh, I, I also tried to subscribe. Yeah, that worked and out. I tried to subscribe, and they asked so many stuff that I don't any that no had to get something else and something else, and I still don't know if I'm subscribed or not. Don't you just have a Google account that you can I don't just know. be logged into? And I then don't you go, know. I don't know what a do you Google? have the YouTube app. I see it right there. So Where just hit it? Right there, the YouTube app. Right there, the big YouTube. Okay, app. okay, you Boom. just hit it. Now what do you do? You go to our thing. <laughs> We we'll have to do this in a minute. We we've, we've tried this on air. Well, it so asked a times. whole bunch of questions. I say I don't know what it is. Okay, so um, I don't know. We hey, we have four hundred subscribers now. How about that? Four hundred, baby. What did we start with? Well, of course we had to start with zero. <laughs> you say we start with four. Every time. <laughs> I know, but I, th- I think that was you under and and a bogus name, uh, and I never subscribed because it was too hard for me to figure out. And then uh, 400 the, subscribers. Now we're still a good ways away from, you know, our competition. I would say like Renee Dupree's at what 3,000, 4,000. Briscoe and Bradshaw are at 20,000. Yeah, Jimmy Cornette's, Cornette's got about 297,000 or something like that. Hey, we're we're it we're 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 going slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. 400 though. That's not bad. So. But that being said, if you watch this stuff, actually hit the subscribe button. You know what else I learned? You hit that little bell next to it. The bell gives you um, a notification when our new video comes out. So, subscribe. Well, I, don't, I don't ever know when they come out. Bell. All of a sudden, I look over there, and there's a, there's a thing with, with Eugene on that. So, I'm watching that. Yeah, so last week, so Wednesday, I... Uh, Released or we released, you know, I do it because I'm the producer and all that kind of stuff. And a you, director. You really didn't. Have no, I don't. I, do I, I don't do nothing. I just sit. <laughs> I do no, no, I don't. I sit yeah. here and drink coffee and drink coke and have a donut and then and then weak old bananas that were green. Now they're green and brown, and I just kick the gnats off of them. And show everybody what's in that. Wait, wait. What? So Rip brings this. Um, so it's a Polar Pop, right? Said, oh, Rip, got you a Polar Pop already this morning, huh? What, what, what's in here? There's a coffee in there. There's coffee. This is stro- a straw, Polar Pop, yeah, and some uh, lukewarm hot coffee. Yeah, and at least you didn't have to make it, right? I know. I That's didn't always have to a make plus. it today. I think brought my, brought my own Coke in my, uh, in my pocket. Got the chocolate donut over here with the with the. Is that on your diet, or you just you don't care on Fridays, or never uh, I don't care? I don't care ever. You don't. No. Uh-uh. So you just go to the gym for nine hours a day and then don't care what you eat? Well, so. if you do that, you can do that. But what if you didn't eat the donut? Oh, you, no, I rode the bike extra so that I could. Oh, purposely did then. Yeah, uh-huh. Nothing wrong with that. Have you ever had like a, a real strict diet? I'm assuming when you body, you know, did the bodybuilding. I didn't eat no red meat for uh, over two years. So red meat, you think that... Is that why I'm fat? Because I eat a lot of steak? Well, steak's got a lot of fat in it, but I, I don't know for sure. I just knew that when I got in there and I was a fat kid, that I'd be pretty much the most muscular guy there because I, I trained real hard, real fast, 
I did everything my own way and uh, won two contests clean. Did you eat donuts during that time? If I wanted to. Did you? Yeah, but then wow. I... but then Just I, no red meat, huh? Pretty much. <laughs> and then uh, doing all that. Anyway, wow. I don't know how we got on that. So anyway, uh, like, subscribe, hit the, hit the bell. Uh, last week, Wednesday, we put out our very first interview. Eugene, baby. Eugene was live uh, via Zoom uh, in live the studios. Thought it went pretty good, you know, for first time. Pretty well, I guess, is the correct English. It was the greatest ever. It was the greatest interview. We, I would say we did that day, but we did three of them that day, so at least top three. Okay, yeah, top three, right. Eugene was looking good. He had his doll there. And and then you have to, I want you to hear on the air right now that uh, his big, his comedy thing was in South Dakota, like I said. I can admit when I'm wrong. Okay, well then do it. Say it was not I in mean, Toronto. I, I just say it. It was not it in was Toronto. It was not in Toronto. But when I looked up GTA online uh -huh. on the internet, I don't know if you know what that is or not, it said GTA stood for Greater Toronto Area. That's why I said it. Oh, okay. I didn't think that he said it. I just read G or heard GTA or read GTA, something like that. Yeah, but he's over in uh, uh, the Dakotas where he lives. Oh, yeah, baby. Eugene is... Big star in the Dakotas. Yeah, hell. Big territory there, right? He's awesome. He said he sold his uh, wrestling company, Midwest Pro, All-Star Pro, whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. Seemed to be doing well. Hey, so anyway, so Zoom, uh, I figured out today we're actually going to have Max Payne on the show, old friend of yours. I figured out on Zoom that we can actually go past that 40-minute mark. So I just set it at like an hour and a half today. So we, you know, if we want to quit at 40, we can, but we don't have to. Well, that's why... You're Mr. Technology, you're the announcer, you're the king, and all I do is eat on here and sit here. And sit here, yeah. Well, I hope you, uh, you know, you're doing okay so far. I think last week was probably your strongest show. You seemed like you were in a really good mood last week. You know, my mom said, man, Rip just, I love when he brings the energy. You know, the king said, you know, the week before, Rip, you know, the first 20 minutes just sat there and didn't really say anything. I almost turned it off. So, um, you know, I hope, I hope you have that energy again today, Rip. People, people in TV land really enjoyed it last week. Well. I think it was our best show. Okay. I just got to think of the king shaking his head. So whenever, I'll just sit here. When I think of the king shaking his head, that means I'll have to up it a little bit here. A little more, little more energy. Yeah, you can have energy without cussing, right? So that's what we were starting talking about. Okay. Vanity. So I guess on YouTube, you're not supposed to use as much profanity as um well i would say as we do but mm -hmm. really as as you do so well i can put some cockney slang in there and nobody would even know what it was and i would i guess i would feel okay saying that you know like like call a uh you know like a grumbling grunt you know uh, no, 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 no 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 wait a minute wait a minute no 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 no, no. just like last <laughs> week you said <laughs> rhymes with yeah and it was Aggie. pretty yeah i don't <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to go about it either, but... Um, well, how are you supposed to express yourself? <laughs> just... Uh -huh. I don't know. Take Tell off. me. Take hey, off. but we got Big Max Payne coming Max on. Max Payne, baby. It yeah, don't, I'm it don't get any better that. than that. Yeah, so last week we uh, filmed Nick Eugene Dinsmore, Mikey Mondo from the Spirit Squad, <clears throat> and Timmy Baltimore, the old uh, announcer from OVW, DCW. I, I won't let all the spoilers out, but I didn't know Timmy Baltimore's first actual match he called for TV was in DCW, Derby City Wrestling, that uh, you started, Rip. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought he had at least done, I, he said he'd done some dark and some stuff like that, mm -hmm. but I didn't know TV was well, it, when you're in Derby a, City, baby. When you finally <laughs> understand the wrestling business, somebody like Pat Patterson could watch you in the ring for 30 seconds, and he says, okay, this guy's pretty much got it, or this guy ain't got a clue. And the same thing with announcers. Yeah. Once the guys have been, I got to remember, I've been at this a while, this, and, and shut up, and listened, and watched. It's hard, hard for me to believe that you ever just shut up and listen. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we got Max Payne on today, and that's all that really matters. Max Payne, baby. The big man, the NCAA All-American from Iowa State. I'm, I was with him there in Austria and Germany, and then just happened to write a letter to Bill Watts, who was my boss in WCW. And since Max was a 
NCAA All-American. Bill Watts liked him already because he knew he was, he was real. He was a stud. He was an All-American. So was he, where did you originally meet him then? That was where I met him. Well, where, where, was, was, that, where was Watts? Texas? No, Watts was uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Well, it was Louisiana, Mississippi, parts of Arkansas, parts of Texas, parts of Oklahoma. Or in Oklahoma. Yeah. How did you meet Max Payne to get to write him a letter? Did he... I met you... Max Payne in 1992 in Austria. And then, so we was together in Austria and Germany. So I wrote the letter to Bill Watts because he was the boss there. Mm. Just like I wrote the letter... Well, I, I had Regal write Bill Watts, and Regal got a job. And, and when Regal got a job with WCW, he got Fit Finley in, he got... Uh, Dave Taylor in also, so they got their mates in. Wow. So that's how they got, and, and and I think Fitz still works for WWE. You have no idea. Yeah, and then Dave Taylor lives in Atlanta, I think. So basically, because they met my little fat butt, you know, they uh, got to come to America, which is a very big, which is a big deal. And uh, now they live in the States. All because oh. of the Hustler Rip Rogers. Yeah, in spite or in spite of the Hustler Rip Rogers, <laughs> put it that way. I was just trying to help them because I knew they was good. I knew they would help. They would help the companies. Uh, they they could be fish instead of everybody being chicken on the menu. So they were all. If you come from uh, Great Britain and you were a pro wrestler, you had all this international experience, and you were just so much better than the Americans. So, I've had people tell me this, like, off the record. Maybe even somebody we interviewed last week, and I'm not supposed to repeat it, but actually, you're kind of a nice guy. Is that is that true, Rip? Like, deep down inside, you're really kind of nice? Well, uh, you got to remember, I'm playing a character. Well, you play it a lot then, like... <laughs> well, you, you don't... It, when you're a wrestler, you don't break character. It's the same old, you're the same old grizzled veteran, poopy head, uh, Say shit head. no good <laughs> some bitch or whatever you, you are. Go. And there I'm just, go. I'm just playing a character when I'm on this show. I'm, I'm a character. Oh yeah. I'm not just talking about the show. Okay. So we watched the clip of, uh, Gail Kim on Bradshaw and, mm -hmm. uh, Briscoe and they were all saying, oh yeah, I love, love Rip, love his training. If you can get past the profanity and the yelling and screaming and kind of the way he goes about it. So do you consider that being a character as well? Like when you were uh, working for WWE training other wrestlers? Surely yeah. at some point in time it's not all character, is it? Well, the, the thing about it is, is anybody that's any good at anything. Look at, and we were comparing this when we was in the limo on the way over here about Bobby Knight. Mm -hmm. filter out his emotions, which he's always only trying to make you better, and listen to the, okay, he could, he could yell and scream at you for a minute and a half, and the whole thing was, was, oh, next time make a bounce pass. And, right. <laughs> and that's yeah. what he's getting at. And in wrestling, I'm doing the same thing. Because I remember the football coach, if he yelled and screamed at me, I remembered it. If he talked softly to me, my feelings weren't hurt, but I really didn't listen. The, the lesson didn't sink in. Because when it'd be like your dad getting mad at you, threatening to spank you, but you go to your room and you go, oh, God, I'm glad he didn't spank me, right? He usually spanked me. Oh, okay. With, with the belt. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, well. Can't use the belt. Probably get arrested. Today oh, my for, gosh, yeah. For for that kind of stuff. Well, let's see, I, ha I had the belt, then I had the... The ruler, it was the yardstick, but it would bend into like three, so it would really smack you on the butt good, you know. And so, I, <laughs> I remember, so what do you mean it would bend? Like it had the built-in bend? Well, it would be like... A yard. A yard, <laughs> and, then, a and then boom, and boom, and now it's a three-layered... Yeah, we didn't have that. We had the just normal yardstick. Okay. So I, my sister was getting it before me. 
Was you hiding? And I don't. Oh, I mean, took I off was running not or watching? Oh, but it, it broke on her. Oh. so then I I laughed because I oh thought, my gosh! I thought, well, now I can't. It's not going to happen to oh, me now. God, he's. Gonna... I can't remember if they just used the broken part <laughs> or it, it was the belt. Are you trying to get your dad arrested on here? It's probably like statue of limitations or something. Or <laughs> I, what, I don't know what it is. That is. But but so. right now, if if the king's watching this, now watch me. I'm shaking my head. Just and shaking you, and my you head. Tell me on the limo on the way over. What do you think the uh, the, the head shake represents? It's cuss words. The f word. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's the f word. But he don't have to say anything. Right. And if you get it, the king, all he has to do is shake his head, and he don't have to say anything. <laughs> So the king was telling me, hey, uh, that, that Eugene interview you guys did was probably the it was my favorite show. And he said, because you didn't say the F word the whole time, because Nick did most of the talking. King's got some sensitive ears in his old age, I guess. Huh? Well, you think I, he's, a, he's a non, you don't think he's ever said those kind of words? Or when he's up at the Legion or VFW, you don't think those old army vets sit around and drop the F-bomb at all? They probably every other word. <laughs> hey, the, the the king fought for our country in Vietnam. Yeah. yeah. So he's seen everything. Uh-huh. So we can't even imagine what he's seen. And so him just shaking his head pretty much says it all. Yeah. He don't have to say anything. He's been there and done that. Thank you for hey, thank you for your service, King. Thank you, King. King baby. All right, so we got the cussing stuff out of the way, right? I think we plugged the Eugene show. We got Max Payne coming up. Talked a little bit about the King Carl Von Dilligan. King Lilas, I should say. How about uh, ICW? So we've been hitting on some some ICW stories each week. Yeah, we're plugging Joe Stassi. Joe Stassi, baby. Kind enough to let us in the ICW group. Mm-hmm. If uh, you're on Facebook and... and um, you know, you love some old school wrestling or, or want to know more about the Poffos and see some cool stuff about Randy Savage and Lanny and the Miser. He's got a cool ICW group I'm sure you could get into. You, you know what it's called, just ICW something. I can't even remember. What's that group called? Which I'm subscribed. Called? I don't know exactly <laughs> what it is. I got it on my phone where you click it and I took a picture of it or whatever. Yeah, but... we'll find the name of that group for the next show. We need to start doing our research and preparing, getting those outlines done. I thought you were going to do that for today. Well, you know, I can't remember stuff. I got a, I got, I got about six things. I had six things on my finger to remind me, and I, but then I couldn't remember what, what they were. <laughs> but, I, but I'm working on my profanity here. So You're doing uh, good. Doing... Now, you can cuss a little bit. I think if you just go from... You know, every other word to none, uh-huh. you, you lose your luster a little bit. It's like, like it's yeah, it's hard to when when you have to think. It's like, hey, uh, don't cuss, uh, Clint uh, or yeah. Vaughn, uh, <laughs> uh, don't cuss. Uh, uh, do we have a uh, uh, don't cuss? <laughs> <laughs> but like Bobby Knight said, uh, just make a bounce pass. <laughs> just make a bounce pass, baby. Right. So, do you have an ICW story to to get into, or you need me to bring something up? Yeah, you can bring something out and just go, go with the flow or whatever. I don't know if we've talked about him before, but I was always intrigued, and I can't remember if we have, um, kind of the origin of Crusher Broomfield, where he came from, Mm. who who he uh, turned out to be Okay. um, after that. I remember as a kid seeing Crusher Broomfield on TV, and I I remember him coming in, and they kind of like abused him in the beginning, didn't they? Like made fun of him. Yeah, what they did was that. Tell us us the Crusher. They did a playoff. George Gray, who ended up being Akeem, uh, One Man Gang, uh, Panama Gang in Tampa when he turned babyface. That's Crusher Broomfield yeah, from ICW. Yeah, George Gray. He come in and worked TV with Gary Royal and Ricky Starr and stuff. And then so we wanted to bring him back. And Randy wrote TV, but Garvin always had huge input. So he would run stuff by Randy. So they used to do, they did a thing in Knoxville. Well, Garvin, would, they did the same thing with Crusher Broomfield. I mean, uh, Crusher Blackwell, Jer- okay. Jerry sure. Blackwell, yeah. who was a, a shorter, uh, heavier guy. And he was actually in the World's Strongest Man contest. And he was very athletic. And Garvin drew a lot of money with him doing the same thing with the box, et cetera. So we would recycle angles that... Uh, maybe 70% in ICW hadn't seen. It was fresh to them, but the ones where they got off Eastern Kentucky, like off the Knoxville TV, it was a rehash 
but you're not catering to the rehash people. You're catering to the guys that hadn't seen it before. Because everybody repeats angles in, in wrestling. You can only do so many things. And uh, uh, let's, let it, let's let it go with that. And see and see what happens. But Crusher Broomfield, yeah, he come in. He was originally from uh, Hank Spartanburg, South Carolina. Could be wrong. He married some girl uh, from from Louisiana, and I, and I think Crusher still lives there. But he was a great worker. He was young. He was a huge man. Uh, he could he could really work, and he played the part very well. Just to reiterate, he turned into a one man gang. I think that was WWE. F won it or not? No. But then he turned into a keen. The whatever yeah. he was was slick. Yeah, the See, African what, dream what was or something like that. Ernie Ladd came in to scout him. Ernie Ladd came into ICW because he was buddies with Garvin. So when Crusher finished up at ICW, he started at Louisiana. So he was in for Bill Watts in Mid South, and he went for da and Dallas and blah 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 and. Uh, uh, he had worked Tampa. He got his W, WWF run, et cetera. But all because, but he started out at in little old ICW. Is that where he started? Well, I mean, he was doing independence in yeah. North Carolina, South Carolina. But uh, the first time in televisions on a consistent basis to, uh, and to develop a character and everything to play the sympathetic baby face was there at ICW. So what was the beginning of that whole thing, though? What, what was it when they were... They like bullying him or, yeah. or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, Randy would always bully him, and and Crusher just looked down at his feet, and people never understood that Randy held a deed to his mother's house or whatever. Oh, was that what it was? So they <laughs> and then Garvin ended up paying it off or whatever. And then after he paid it off, then there, then Crusher could do whatever he what could uh, to uh, basically bully Randy. <laughs> so there's the payback. But wow. but Crusher had to sell and sell and sell and almost. I remember that. I felt sorry for him. Right. As a kid. And now, if you're a little kid yeah. feeling sorry for him, uh, the older wrestling fans would feel sorry for him too. All right. So that was our uh, ICW segment. I was going to say what it stood for, but I can't remember again. And what you, Interna you international championship told me wrestling? I was a dumbass. Last week when I. Oh, I'm not using profanity. Well, you can use some. You're you a dumb butt. That. Dumb butt. You can. <laughs> Von Lilas is a dumb butt. I mean, <laughs> dumb butt, dumb butt, dumb I butt. Mean, Cornette cusses, McAfee cusses. We can, you can cuss a little bit. I mean, come on, don't don't be too gun sh gun shy. I'm here. trying to think not to cuss and to, and yeah, to, yeah, and to, and talk. to talk slowly. We'll be fine. I'll, I'll get you. I'll, I'll, I'll remind you to. Quit All right, I'll, 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 I'm I'm just I'm a continual work in just, progress of cleaning my potty mouth up, <laughs> as Ole Anderson would say. Ole would just shake his head, just like the king, because Ole was a Randy, it's like all wrestlers, if they're talking in the dressing room, every second or third word is profanity. Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh -huh. And that's with the girls' matches, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, nobody gets off scot-free. So with Ole Anderson, it was about every third word. Randy, when Randy was on a roll, it was about every second word. But I just filtered it out and uh, figured it out. So if you idolize Randy, which I did, if you idolize Ole, which I did, you sort of want to be like them, you know? Yeah. And I'm not even a reasonable facsimile. See, I, I listen to commercials on TV and they say, oh, this is a reasonable facsimile, whatever, whatever that is, <laughs> an inferior imitation or whatever. Uh, but we had our RCW story. So, so that's, for, that's for Joe right there. It's for you, Joe. Uh huh. I thought there was another uh, territory that you had sent me a text one day that you said you wanted to, to hit on. It was another. It is, but I can't think of it right now you can't... because I didn't do my research. So you can't even think of the territory you, you were going to talk about? I think it was like Florida or something, wasn't it? No? Well, I mean, we've got like 30 minutes still until Max Payne is on the show. I hope you come up with something. Oh, I got all, next, all kinds of stuff. In the next 30 minutes. Oh, uh, uh, Dylan, oh, oh Dylan's, Dylan's calling. Plastic. Okay. Oh, hey, man. Let, let up to the microphone. Okay, let me see. There's that. You got to hit that speaker. And I hit, hit the speaker. Here at There's Studios. the speaker. Dylan Bostic. Hey, you're on live at uh, Lila's studio. Dylan Bostic, where are you? Somewhere, in Florida. somewhere in Florida. Have you made it down to Miami? No, no. I had to get some uh, some stuff 
Uh, okay, did you spend the night in Orlando? No, no, I uh, stayed somewhere in fucking Georgia. I don't even know. And you can't remember. Intriguing huh? conversation with yeah. Dylan Bostic right now. Yeah, well, he had yeah, to... it's fucking great. What, what are you guys talking about on the podcast right now? Well, we're trying to... Um, we just got done with our ICW story. We've been working on Rip's profanity. Yes. Um, oh. I mean, you can drop F-bombs. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's we're, fine if I do it. I'm yeah, we're trying to get. Hey, hey, hey! You guys are fucking over on TikTok now. We are. What did we do? Yeah, we. Dude, you got some. Rip's got some views on there. Yeah, we got some stuff going on on TikTok. Shit. I guess you're not coming to, uh, into the studio today for the show, huh? Well, uh, yeah, probably not. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm what, a little far away. Why don't you come around anymore? I never said you didn't do good. We need. We, you're welcome to come in anytime. Hey, I noticed on Instagram, like you post stuff and you get like ten thousand likes on it. But when you were on our show, you didn't post anything or get any likes or get us any followers or anything. Well, because if you remember that day, Rip was he was uh, in unusual form. Was that good or bad? No, you were you were scared to say anything. So yeah. It was the day where you just didn't talk at all. Yeah, we that happens every once in a while here. Well, in the studio. That's what happens. It's like in wrestling when they have a three man booth instead of two. He freezes up a lot here. You don't want to step on anybody's toes, etc. He's camera shy. Yeah, that was it. I'm camera shy. <laughs> As Bulldog yeah, Brown. Well, when I when I come, I'm just there to look pretty. I don't really need to say anything. Nobody wants to listen to me fucking talk. Yeah, well, that's true too. So. Hey, hey, we got Max Payne coming on the show today. Oh, he's over. Hell yeah. 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 It don't get any better than that. All right, Dylan. Well, we got to get back to uh, live TV here, man. So, hate, so, okay, man. Hate to cut you, you guys off. have a great show. Be the, yeah, it, yeah. This will be the best show we do Follow today. Follow Dylan Bostick on Instagram. He's a uh, it's Instagram um, celebrity. Yeah, he's what over. Well, he's a movie those? star. He's a movie star. Hey, he, hey Rip. Uh-huh. Fucking bitch. Huh? FB? Fucking, fucking bitch. Oh. All right. Hey, bitch. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. It's, it's you. Furbage. Okay. Dylan Bostic, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Taxi. Call the police. Call. <laughs> hey, so T. Weasel, Manny, the, the, the Weasel Valverde, sent me a message after last week's show. Remember we were talking about, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it his secret admirer. Remember we had somebody? Manny had a secret admirer. Yeah, remember we was uh, it a male or a female? Well, we don't know. So I dug into man. If I just had last week's last week's notes. Do you have last week's notes anywhere? Um, it was uh, I don't know. Last week's notes somewhere out here is how many hot dogs are on his neck or what? Classified Chappie was the uh, is YouTube. that a male or a female? We don't know. It looks to uh, it looks like it's going to be a female. Uh huh. So T. Weasel sends me a message and says, hey, who, who is the one that says I was adorable? I've been asking all around town, and I just can't figure it out. Well, nobody, it, it would be nobody in town that would call Manny adorable. Well, that's kind of, what I was, <laughs> kind of what I was thinking. So he's got like a, uh, a, so we're go a ahead secret admirer. Secret admirer. Manny, it, could, it could be male, it could be female, could be. or it could be one in between, right? But you're not allowed to say that, right? Well, you can say it. If, if it is a male, there's just nothing wrong with it. Or if it's, it's a not? tweener, there's nothing wrong with it. That's Yeah, that's what you're supposed to say. Oh, okay. It's okay it's fine. then. fine, yes. Any of that's fine. So it could be a dinner masher, right? It's classified chappy is uh, T Weasel, secret admirer. Maybe today we'll have um we didn't get one last week. You're gonna have a, a photo of I mean the people are were asking, like, where was Weasel's photo last week? Well I got him. Is he on the list today? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. I mean you have all those notes from last week we didn't mm -hmm. we didn't cover. You know who else I got a text from said that that he's really enjoying the show and I didn't even know he watched was uh, Jimmy Paradise. He put the show over. Oh, Jimmy will be. He, well, he's a big time. Uh, uh, what is he? He's a big time producer, with, time producer. With, with WWE. So he'll be nicking. He'll be stealing the stuff that you come up with. And <laughs> Jimmy will get paid for it. Laugh. Go, ha ha, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Because yeah. When, you're a, when you're a producer, 
and you're racking your brain about every minute to come up with something new, it's best to grab something somebody else has done and then uh, put your take on it, and it's always it's always pretty good. Yeah, there'll probably be a Lila Studios segment on uh, NXT next week. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Or it'll it. be Lila spelled backwards, which is L. Let me see. L. Wait a minute. Lila spelled backwards. L I L A S. So I'd be Salil. 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 So if if you find it, all of a sudden on WWE there's a a, a Salil segment, it's yeah. Lila spelled backwards. That's right. So uh, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Paradise. Uh, James Long. James Long. James Long. Hey Rip, have you watched any AEW this week? Uh, not yet. <laughs> uh huh. When's the last time you watched AEW? Well, we had a match with Serena here that that I watched, but that's probably been what two months ago. But oh. I don't. I, but I don't watch wrestling on TV. You know that. Well, I just wondered if you no watched any, or I mean, this is a wrestling show. Hey, we never really talked about it either. You, you do know Cody Rhodes went to uh, WWE, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's uh. I don't think he's lost yet. He's beat uh, Seth Rollins a couple times. Won the big match at WrestleMania, and then they have kind of the rematch at the uh, the follow up to WrestleMania, and he won again. Mm-hmm. So there's a little people were a little unsure if that was the right move to have him win again. You well, it's like anything in wrestling. How can you miss me if I never leave? So what's that if, mean? It, it means if. If he's on TV for 10 straight years with WWE, mm-hmm. goes right to AEW, mm-hmm. then goes right back to WWE, how could you miss him when he's doing the same old thing? Uh, the Andy Griffith Show was on how many years? 10. Not not that long. Nine. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> the whole the whole thing is they ended because you had... It's like when you'd work for Vince Sr., Jimmy Valley would go in and work for him. He'd stay nine months. He'd say, you come back in three years. You get another nine months. Yeah, you're people, not there all the time. Well, people if, if you're there all the time, you mean nothing. A, look at the ratings, please. Nobody watches wrestling. You used to do this in your matches. Time out. Time out. Mm-hmm. Cody did leave WWE for like six years. Six years? I think so. No. How could it be six years? Well, I think it was. Well, when did AEW start? Like three years ago. Okay. But that's not when he left. Because he went to Japan and was doing all that other shit first. Uh, having a club. Uh, having, uh, okay. I think he was gone for six years. Okay, well, Maybe I, I guess if you do your research, you would know. And I'm you said, I years. think. Well, look it up since you didn't well, know your re- since you didn't do your didn't you do your research and he had how many characters in WWE? Yeah, but people don't. I mean, okay, Randy Orton. He doesn't leave. He's been there twenty years. They just did his twenty year reunion. Do you think he should leave? He hasn't left. He knows how to work. See, How's you, that? You always just answer uh, whatever well, way fits your your narrative. Well, who who don't do that? What do you do? I I, I tell the truth. You tell the truth. Look, two thousand sixteen, six okay. years. Six years, he was gone for WWE. Okay, he was there for how many years? Ten. Okay, in other words, they've seen his act. Well, they've seen everybody's act. Okay, well, that's why. That's why. Years. That's why you don't have that. All those guys have been there okay. Forever. That's why you don't do that. Yeah, but where back in the day, you could just go to a brand new territory, nobody would see you. You can't and, do that now. And well, and but, and and why did that? And why is that? Because Vince bought all the chairs. Oh, no, he didn't buy them. Oh, he stole them. What did he do then? He, he destroyed them. Once he destroyed them, he was the only show in town. Yeah. The other ones did. The other one. No, no, nobody wakes up saying, "Oh, I wish I was a TNA superstar." I, I would no, love to be. Yeah. No, nobody. No, 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 I'd love hey, to be one. I don't want to be in the NFL. I want to play in European football. Well, I mean, it beats, I don't want to play in the works. NBA. I don't want to play in the NBA. I want to play in the developmental league. It beats working for a living. Would you rather be in the G League or no league? I'd rather be in the G League. Okay. Well, sort of. But no, what I'm getting at, that's not your goal, is it? No, my no. goal was to to run a podcast out of a lot of the studios. Look well, at us, 400 yeah. subscribers. 
Is it four hundred, or did you exaggerate? Was no, it's like four hundred, right on the nose. Four hundred on the nose, right on the nose. Okay, baby. I'm gonna I'm gonna click over there so, right now. Ten minutes ago, I asked a question that you still haven't answered. Wait a minute, I wanna I wanna see how many subscribers we got right now because you, you said the, it's head. it's four hundred on the nose, That's just like I told you. <laughs> I can I can see I can see the king shaking his head right now. All right, let me. I'm gonna try to a ask this question again. Okay, I'll do try you, and answer it. Do, do you think, because last time I asked, you said... Now, now you're asking, you say, when you're saying, do you think, that means, what's my opinion? Right, but you have okay. to at least have an opinion on the question. Okay. Instead of saying, they've seen... Or, do you think they should have had Cody Rhodes win both matches? Or do you think he, they should have lost already to the okay, now every match to okay. set up match three? Oh, okay, look at it this way. Everybody thinks if 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 Cody Rhodes went to AEW and was a big star there. And then everybody thinks when he goes back to Vince, Vince is just going to squash him. Everybody's expecting that. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Okay. But what happened now, he give him a couple wins. So now that when he loses, it's going to mean something even more that he, he, he kept him as a superstar. So that when he works a program with somebody else and maybe he loses, then all of a sudden it means a whole lot more. Yeah. Because no matter what, uh, Vince McMahon knows how to make money. And he can't let personal feelings come in to make money. Well, he fires his own kids. I don't think he's... Well, gonna... he fires... He's, if he oh, fires... He's gonna... No, uh, no matter what, uh, he's got his stock. He's set forever, blah, blah, blah. It don't matter. So I finally saw, you always say, WWE had their best... Quarter ever. Uh -huh. I finally saw you McAfee uh -huh. posted or tweeted or something that WWE's quarter uh -huh. and FanDuel, who he's you know, right. obviously a part of both, uh -huh. both had their strongest quarters ever. So I did finally see somebody else back up your claim that w <clears throat> WWE had their strongest quarter. Ever. Well, I just saw it on the internet or like on my phone. Yeah. Like you just did, and you looked it up, though. I'm not smart enough to look it up or anything, but it just it said that they had their strongest quarter because a lot about that. They, so where's they, that money coming from? The, TV? Their TV deals, yeah. See, years ago, you had to pay, pay money. Right. Uh, when you put your wrestling tape on any network, uh, local station or whatever, it was like you buying an infomercial. Yep. So when uh, Dick the Bruiser would have his show on Indianapolis, he's paying that studio to play it. Then he's making money from him being a TV star and and running running the house shows. But now it's a different ball game. It'd be like uh, uh, they pay the NBA to televise their games, yeah. and they're televising. And they pay WWE super, super, super big money. Right now, unfortunately, with COVID or whatever the reason is, the ratings are just very, very, very low compared to the way they used to be. But when the network signs up, we're going to pay you X amount of dollars, whether one person watches or 20 million, they're still paying you that money. So as long as that TV contract is in, WWE is doing record profits. Plus, I think they fired about yeah. a, a hundred people, so yeah. now they don't have to pay them. It seems like you would have to start getting some ratings to keep getting the TV deals. Now. Yeah, well, <coughs> they probably they okay. If you sign a ten-year TV, and this is just a number, if you sign a ten-year TV deal and you make this is just a number, ten million dollars, they have to pay you ten million dollars every year until that. Until that uh, contract is up, yeah. yeah. Whether one person watches or twenty million, but they've had TV deals for what? 20 but it, years? it's continually changing. But I'm just saying. Uh huh. I don't know. I just feel like eventually you have to get some ratings back to keep getting TV deals. Well, exactly. No, they're going to get TV deals. Maybe on. Remember when uh, WWE would be on minor. Uh, minor cable. They were on the. They were on CNN at one time. Correct. Oh, I remember that. Well, you're too too young, but yeah. uh, they would pay to be on certain. Th I, I remember the first. I remember when Southwest Championship Wrestling was the first one to be on USA Network. And, I think that's and, the one you were going to talk about. Southwest Championship Wrestling. No. No. That you texted me about. Uh, 
I don't think so. But okay, it could, go ahead. But Ken, Kenny Lucas and Ricky Morton were on there, and they lasted for a short amount of time. I think they were paying six thousand dollars a week to be on there. At the time, this is mm. this is in. Uh, <clears throat> that's a lot of money. Yeah, uh, but it could really spike your where you ran to. Now you're a major superstar. That's like when Ole had TBS years ago. He would, he would. Uh, it's like when Bill Watts ran. I was on two Superdome shows with Watts, and one mm. of them drew thirty six thousand people. Wow. Now, now this is when they ran New Orleans every week, and on this one particular week, there was thirty six thousand people there. So they would have all the guys in the territory there with a big show, and there might be six guys like the Road Warriors would come in, uh, Tommy Rich would come in, Ole would come in, somebody else would come in. They were the superstars off Atlanta, and they do the same thing with Fritz von Erich. He had those strong TVs. Uh, him and Watts were partners in a lot of places, and you, but what they were, they were old wrestlers that understood the wrestling business. It wasn't like it is now where TV executives are running wrestling and they don't know nothing about fucking wrestling. Right. So I remember they had about 45,000 people in Dallas for a, a flare against, uh, I think, Kerry Von Eric match. 45,000 people, but they run Dallas twice every week because they would run the Dallas Portatorium show, then they, and then they would, they would do a TV show too. Wow. So that was just so phenomenal. But anyway, I'm fucking... Dis- oh, that's all right. No. Yeah. Hey, anytime you talk, Rip, it's a good thing, you know? I wouldn't, nope. go, I wouldn't go that far, but... <laughs> I saw Max Payne just joined our, uh, our Zoom. He's early. Oh. Early, baby. Well, it's better to so be early unlike, than late. Uh, unlike uh, Timmy Baltimore, you know, who was late. Was my guy Mondo? He was on time. I think both my guys were on time, and I think your guy was... Who was my guy? Timmy Baltimore. Oh, well, they had to get through, too. Late. He was late. Oh, okay. Trained by you. Late. Um, we only got a couple emails. We're going to get to those here before we got to go meet with Max Payne. Um, the Lila Studios. So that's like T-H-E, because the Lila Studios was taken. Somehow, who would ever take Lila Studios? As well... A- as an email. It, well, they have li- That's li- li- Lila's. And then sometimes you'll type Lila's oh. in and Lila's will come up. Never does. Oh, it does okay. at the top, but it's like an Etsy thing. It's not, oh. a, it's not a YouTube channel. It's like a you go buy. It's like a store you buy stuff from. Oh. Anyway, Lila Studios was taken. So it's the, T-H-E, Lila's, L-I-L-A-S, studios at gmail.com. Any kind of questions, comments you want us to talk about on the show, that's what you need to do. Go there. Uh, we get a lot of comments, which I appreciate on YouTube. It really helps our channel out. Uh, but I don't always get to go through all of them and write them down for the show. So, email them. We only got a couple of emails, man. Last week, we blew up with emails. <clears throat> this week, we only got a couple. But we got this one from, uh, I don't know who this is. Triz, T-R-I-S-A-G-F-M something. Whatever that stands for. Uh, wants to know if you have any kind of like Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart stories. Were you ever with them? In the same territory as them, work them, anything like that. Any, anything on either one of those guys. Uh, when I was in Calgary, Bret Hart, he would be, that's where, where he was from. And he worked, worked there with his dad for how many years? And when he was home, he'd, he'd come down to the shows there. Yeah, speak up, Rip. Okay, when Bret Hart would be home from WWE or a WWF at the time when I was working in 1988 for Stu Hart, he would come home there and just hang out and be one of the boys. Did he ever work there? Or just no, hang out? no, Never. he was. I mean, he worked there for years. Then he got a job with right. WWE, and he was how many? He was hell. He was was he cowboy? Whatever. Were you there then, or was that no, before no, you got there? No, this was. Uh, when, you got to remember when you're wrestling every day in the territories, you don't watch TV. Yeah. You don't watch what's going on in other places. You're pretty much focused on your own thing, having your own match, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then when you're wanting to finish up, then you start looking for somewhere right. for somewhere else. So when he came and hang out with one of the boys, was he really one of the boys? Like, did he hang out with you? Did you talk to him then? Or was he like a big, did he, did he big time you guys? Because he was no, he home didn't, from WWE. No, because 
he was just Bret Hart, never been anywhere. Yeah, because he yeah. And but he got a uh, a nice job with WWE, and he got the Japan deals because of he was Stu's son. So no matter what anybody tells you, when you're a second generation or your dad's a promoter and a very well respected promoter, you're not a normal guy in wrestling. You you are certainly privileged. Yeah. Where somebody else, uh, I was never trained. I learned, and I was never smart to the business. This uh, all the Hart family, they all understood the business when they were probably six years old. Yeah. You know, they had a tremendous advantage, tremendous oh, advantage, sure, yeah. and it was. Uh, but it's that way in, in anything. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what about Shawn Michaels? Anything with him? Were you ever? No, I, Texas was no. Never? He he. I remember he worked for Watts. He worked for. He was in Memphis. I think for he a worked for Can Kansas Rockers. City. He he worked. Well, he was with AWA then, and then yeah, and then Vern over. would. Uh, Vern was working with uh, Lawler and them. Yeah, and and he had that. Shawn Michaels is a tremendous, tremendous performer. Yeah. You know him personally? Cornette doesn't like him. Well, I'm not saying he's a good person. Yeah. And anybody that can be, excuse me, can barely be a, a butthole. Asshole, you can say it. Well, and But then all of a sudden, they turn to Jesus. No, they're just working a program. In my mind. Yeah. In my mind. So he could be uh, changed, and he doesn't do that anymore. But at one time... Wow. Would, uh, did you ever wrestle either one of them? No. Never, huh? Well, what I just tell you? You told me no. Okay. Yeah, and I just confirmed it just okay. to make sure I heard you right. Right, okay. You know, just to... You never repeated a question just to make sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> never, huh? You uh, bought that one, huh? <laughs> uh, no. Just Only making sure. Who, would, who, who do you think's better? Michaels or, or Bret Hart? Or are they both better in their own different ways? Uh, that's that's a good answer that, that you just did. Yeah. Uh, Shawn Michaels is so, so, so charismatic. Yep. And he could sell, too. Oh, he was just... Uh, Brett is good. Shawn is... This is strictly my opinion. Correct. Is better. Gotcha. But they are both... Uh, they're both great. But then you have Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb. It's, yeah. it's whatever you like. I mean, I would I always would prefer to watch Shawn Michaels. Yes. Over see, Bret Hart. see, I could not watch Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. You just don't think it's real? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. That'd be like Brock Lesnar against some. Yeah. Uh, hundred and hundred and fifty uh, against Conor McGregor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And no, there's just too much size differential. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. And any heavyweight's going to be the, a smaller guy. Or the guy is, or you're just showing right there, the guy is horrible. Yep. So if Undertaker couldn't beat Shawn Michaels, then Undertaker, God, he's a, almost, it seems like almost a foot taller and a yeah. hundred and some pounds, or a hundred pounds heavier. That's never just numbers. Then he's obviously not very good. Right. Not very tough. So we got one more email before we got to get to a break. We're going to take a little break, uh, interview uh, Max Payne. They come back with five photos from uh, Rip's phone. So we got another one from uh, Rory. I think he's, uh, I think you know him through wrestling. Uh, I think that's a Dylan Bostic boy, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, he said he loves the show, watches every week. That's cool. Thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe. Nothing like Rip. Uh, it says. Uh, well, he probably could figure out the questions they was asking you, where he didn't have to put a username in or this or that or whatever. And I just shook my head. I said, God, this is just too much. I guess if anybody else subscribes, it just goes on there. But if I subscribe, they want 32, 32 well, you, questions answered. You have to answered. have a Google account. It's real yeah. easy. So back in the day, I think when you were training, I think Johnny Ace was in charge for a while. So his question is kind of related to that. I don't know if he's, uh, if he's just kind of ribbing here or if he's being serious. But <clears throat> he said, do you have any uh, stories, funny stories, actually? He said, training swimsuit models and bodybuilders back in the day when Johnny Ace used to, to sign those kind of people. I just treat them all the same. Uh, you got to remember, most they'll go now and they'll choose people that really have no desire for wrestling. 
Yeah. But they want to be on TV. They want to make some money. Uh, I want a guy with passion. All they want to do in life is to be a pro wrestler. Right, but that wasn't the question. Okay, well, the question so, was any of them that actually were signed back then. I, I can't even think. I know. I know. Sylvan Gagne, I think, came in as like a wasn't he like an underwear model or something? I have no idea what he was. I don't remember any of the girls back then. Were they like the classes I was in? Like Melina was kind of a wrestler, I think, wasn't she? She trained out in California, I believe. Gail Kim was there for a while. She was uh-huh. a wrestler. Yeah. Who, who who would have been some of the... I can't even remember. Oh, but they, well, the other ones were tough enough girls. Nydia and uh, the blonde chick. Linda Miles. They were all tough enough people that were there. Do um, you remember having any? Like lingerie models? You weren't like Tori Wilson, no. Kelly Kelly, you didn't train any of those guys, no, girls. Uh-uh. If they do, I wouldn't remember them anyway. I'd just tell them to get in line and try and do what everybody else is doing because they don't know what they're doing anyway. But if you can learn to do this stuff by just uh, copying everybody else, and then first you learn the basics where you can do it safely and not get hurt, then you throw your little, instead of everything with a flat back, of, of rolling, go to a knee, getting knocked off balance, it's the way Garvin would work. He didn't work like everybody else. Everybody else, oh, three clotheslines, bump feed, poop on you too. Oh, if I jump shit out. on you too. So I guess Roy, the answer to the question is Rip uh, didn't either, either. Either he didn't train any of them, or he doesn't remember training them. And if he did, he treated them all like no, I treated everybody them all. else. Yeah, it was all I treated them all bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but I would tell everybody if you can survive me and get a tough skin. It's going to be a whole lot easier on with you on the next level. If I'd have been super nice, 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 and all of a sudden somebody would cut cut hard on you, you'd, be, you'd start crying or whatever. You you get all upset and you couldn't perform at oh, all. Oh, we're getting the we're getting the wrap it up like okay. Rick. Gotta wrap- go. Max Payne on in two minutes. We'll be back with five photos from Rip's phone. Okay, I'll do Owen Hart right now, right? That's right. So we are back here at Live the Studios, and we are going to get to everyone's favorite segment. I mean, this thing is just taking off from coast to coast. Five photos from Rip Rogers' cell phone. Rip's got like 12,952 photos. He, I, I hear him over there clicking, taking pictures of pictures once again for this segment, just to make sure. Rip, you you with us? You ready to go, man? Well, I got one we picture. Just, I mean, we just got the big thing. I don't even have that camera on anymore, so we're just on the on the computer camera here. Just had the big interview with Max Payne. He's gonna be a hell of a guest for us. Ripper, the very first picture. What have we got up here, man? You got a picture of me and Owen Hart. You got to speak up, Rip. You got a picture of me and Owen oh, Hart. All right, Rip's gonna show some fire here for the next ten minutes. He's, yeah. he's real worried here. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, here's Owen Hart. I met Owen in 1988 working for his dad, Stu Hart. Of course, his brother's Bret Hart. He's got a whole whole bunch of brothers, and they're all different. And this is me wrestling Owen Hart in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I think it was about his first weekend. Not is that many, WCW? Yeah, not many people know that he worked for WCW. But I knew what he could do, so it was completely different. Uh, in and out, nobody got hurt. It was a fun match. Uh, I liked it and he liked it, so that's Man, all. You look, you look ripped there, Rip. I was jacked. How old yeah. were you? Thirty-eight. Let me see. This was a, probably at least thirty-seven. I think I was thirty-seven there because I hadn't torn my quad yet. Shredded. I, I tore my yeah. quad. I tore my quad in wrestling in England in nineteen ninety-two, uh, working with Regal. Were you living in Seymour right there? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's wild. So there, Looking good, baby. There's Rip against Owen Hart. So that's Rip Rogers versus Owen Hart. That was picture number one. Number one. Now let's go to picture number two. Picture number two. Picture number two Holy cow. is you got the legendary Curly Neal, the premier dribbler in the world of sports when he was a head dribbler for... Uh, the Harlem Globetrotters. And then Globetrotters, we got, baby. When we got the legend, Scott Romer. Scott Romer is truly everywhere. He, Romer is everywhere. And there's me with my fanny pack on. No beard? Short hair? No beard. Well, that's on. when I was I was running towns for Ole. Oh, trying to look good, huh? So he did. He said, can you shave your beard off? 
I said, yeah. So I shaved my beard off. So I actually got to play and guard Curly a couple times. Oh, so you played in the game. Well, not this one, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys from Seymour. Max Seifter played because Richard Grove from Seymour was with the, uh, the Generals for 10 years. As a performer, then he was a referee for about five oh, really? years, too. So we had Romer weasel his way into this. You get him in here, or Weasel get you in? Or no, weasel, not weasel. no, Romer. Romer got me in. No, Romer's the man. Romer didn't get you in the Globetrotters, did he? Well, not at this time. I'd already been with him before. Oh, yeah. No, Doctor Grow, Richard Grow, he got you me got in Romer before. in then. Yeah. Uh huh. And but uh, the legendary picture, me and uh, the hammer, Scott Romer, and there I am with the, the shaved beard with my. Uh, purple fanny pack. It don't get any better than that. Living the dream, baby. Okay, now picture number two. So now we got picture, picture number three. Picture number three. Picture number three. We're in Pat McAfee's barn. Oh yeah, those were the days. There's Pat up at the top, next to Randy. My son Mark is on my left. Yours truly yeah, sitting really there. Your right, but it's... yeah, it's on my right. Yeah, left on, on the picture. Mm -hmm. And then, then next door to me, to my left. On the right in the picture is the legendary Vaughn Lilas. Ah, that's when I dyed my beard, it looks like. No, you didn't. I don't think you well, needed shit, did you, that thing. But you didn't need to dye it then. Oh, I bet. Look, that's totally dyed for Was sure. It? Look at that thing. Okay. Yeah, 100% dyed. But uh, all the top stars are here in this picture. Man, that's uh, Pat McAfee's bar. We had something going on there. It lasted about a whole two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. It was yeah. cool, though. And then he went on vacation, <laughs> then and we he, never saw him again. Yeah, that, and that was it. So. <laughs> But uh, he got to do his thing, so what the hell, right? Live the dream for a second. He's in WrestleMania. We are in Lila Studios. Yeah, don't get any Worked better out than that. Worked out great for all of us, didn't it? Next, <laughs> we got the weasel, Manny Valverde. Man, I hope we find out who his secret admirer is. Uh, Look how adorable he is. Yeah, with Travis Steele, who's about six foot nine, and uh, he, he's some big wig in some company down in Atlanta. He gives me a call every once in a while just to touch base. We he was in a, de a developmental, right? Uh, Trevor Steele, did he ever get signed? I don't think oh, so. Oh, he did. So he, he just had, in WWE? Yeah, he had a couple tryouts, and he said he stole the show. Because he had a 20-minute promo, and I'd give him no. I'd say, okay. 20-minute promo? Yeah. I said, said, like, I ha I put a, uh, a can of Coke. I said, give me 20-minute promo. Three, two, one. And he'd start off talk whatever, and by the end of the promo, it all come back to that can of Coca-Cola. That's how good he was. And he had over two-hour matches called in the ring. He was so good. He was legit six foot nine. He was a lineman at Purdue University. And, uh, he was so good he couldn't get hired. Yeah, and that's that's <laughs> that's the way the wrestling business is. I'm almost positive he played with Kerrigan at Purdue. He probably did. I think he did. He, he was telling me about, I think, at OVW once. Okay, he probably was. Yeah, pretty wild. Okay, and then we got the last... Flying lab. through these days. It's almost like i got to go pick up my daughter at daycare again this week. Okay, well, I don't have that last picture. So the last picture... Oh, gee, oh go back to that one. Let's Which do one? that one. Which one? Next, that, that one. What that is it? one? Yeah, hell yeah. Let's do that one. Oh, that's that's just me looking good. I mean, where are... This was, like, this was are like... Are you a model there, or what are you, what are you doing there? Oh, this is like 1991. Shaved, tan, and vascular. I got the nice head of hair, I, and I got the jet black beard. And I was training in Seymour every day for hours and hours. Yeah, I was in high school. Yeah, and uh, that was just a picture of me, snapped. And, of course, when I went to New York and did some things with photos. Uh, so you posed nude. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, you can read between the lines or whatever. You're well, only, I never knew that. You're That's only, breaking news here. You're only, you're only young. Half, well, I was 37 here. Uh, Half-ass young, good-looking, and uh, I was in Times Square, let's just put it that way, and and got cash for just a bunch of still photos. And you I think was, they were for females I, or males? I, I didn't care. It was just... Uh, you just wanted the money. Yeah, because I was different characters. I had... Uh, they put dark in my hair, and I had a dark beard. Then they uh, then they shaved the beard and made the hair. I was four different characters. So was that picture in Times Square, or was I, that? I don't. I, they, they took a bunch of pictures. I have no idea what was published. Yeah, didn't care. It was just it. another thing in life. Hmm. It don't get any better. Just than uh, that. 
Nude photos of Times Square, just another day in the life of Rip Rogers. It don't get any better. Right. It don't get any better than that, does it? You just took the picture twice. You know, well, like, I don't. You, I can't remember. How many times are you gonna take? You just like it that much, don't you? Well, I. Uh, I think you look hot. There. Do you? Do you have? Okay. Do you have any ex? Now, when when there's the bushwhackers. Now, when we do this, do you have any? Uh, is the picture up there? No. It will be up. I mean, I. I just don't understand why you don't get that. Like, I will put it in the video. I, I edit all this stuff. I don't know if you know that or not, but this doesn't just pop out on YouTube all by itself. Like, it takes me to go through it, I don't match know. up the pictures, all okay. that kind of stuff. Okay, well, whatever then. <laughs> but I thought you had to have my... You have to send them to me. Text. You can't just text them to me? All right, so that was five photos. Yeah, we'll five we'll photos. figure this out off air. Yeah, five photos. Really, not. He's just trying to be uh, that, that we difficult. need to do. Yeah, I'm trying to be difficult. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. Well, these were made out a couple of weeks ago, but then he did, then he didn't do them. When I thought we well, were going to make we three did shows. Show, so, all right, go to uh, Live Studios Wrestling with Rip Rogers. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell at the end. And smash. Oh, here's what I forgot to do, and I oh. got to put this in the beginning. We have a schedule now. We're going to release our show every Monday. We're going to release an interview that we do every Wednesday. I'm going to get um, clips out of rip wrestling and, and rip promos and things like that from back in the 80s. I'm going to say every Saturday. Don't hold me to that, but every weekend at some point in time. So we're going to have a little schedule there. Check out our interviews on Wednesday, our show on Monday. You got anything to add, Rip? No. Perfect.